What's up guys? Invader1 here again. You remember the Volus, right? They're the little guys that look like tiny little round hamsters in their exosuits. They come from the planet Irune and normally have the Turians handle all of their military work, right? But some time ago, we got a look at what the Volus are capable of. Oh yeah, the Volus were added to Mass Effect 3 multiplayer via the Retaliation DLC. Now, although I've done guides and build videos on the little pudgy guys, I feel it's necessary to go back. Now, with all of the knowledge we have now on the Volus's abilities and clearly break out how powerful they are and how effective they can be. Oh, and uh, we're also going to talk about how racist you are. Yes, you heard me correctly. Racist. R-A-C-I-S-T. U Y O U. That's right. First, to make this easy, instead of going through a boring build process for each bolus, I'm going to explain which part of their abilities are the same across the board, how to use them, why they are so important, and why they make these little guys overpower little cannibals. All right. First, the Volus Light Melee. All Voluses have a cloaking ability. It is very short and lasts only 4 seconds, but it works. It is the most effective cloak out of all the characters in the game. I have literally seen enemies coming directly at me, and the moment I cloaked it turned almost immediately after another teammate. Oh yeah, it's a teammate troll tool. So if you didn't know this, now you know. Right? The best way to use the Volus is to treat them like mini up and close personal infiltrators. You can cloak, go up to an unsuspecting enemy and deal some pain. Next is the Volus's Heavy Melee, or also known as the Volus Defensive Stance. Now this one is important as many don't use it or even understand what it does. The Volus's Heavy Melee does a few things. One, it makes the Volus look so cute. Oh, look at that. Just so cute. He just want to squish his little ball body. And it also gives off a decent yet somewhat weak pulse that hurts the enemies around you, staggers them, provides a limited damage reduction bonus, and slowly regenerates your shields. You see? Oh yeah, Cerberus, take that, yeah, take that, eat the Volus Rage. Volus Passives, or also known as the Volus Awesome N7 Badassery Training, right? Right? Except for the Volus Engineer, can be spec the same across the board, allowing you to take advantage of the weight capacity bonus on rank 4 at the bottom to equip heavy weapons without affecting power recharge time so much and to take advantage of the rank 5 shoe boost bonus of shoes restored by 30% for even more boost shielding boost. Shield stuff. Shields, yeah, go shield boost. Shield boost properties in rank 5. You don't need to go to rank 6 here to give you more points, you know, for fitness and power. So you can have, you know, at least put 3 points in fitness. And uh, for the Volus Engineer, you spec out to rank 4 weapon damage instead. Keep shield boost the same on rank 5. And actually fill in rank 6 for weapon damage to make this little guy an offensive powerhouse. Um, even if it's a little powerhouse, but it's a, it's a powerhouse nonetheless. But that engineer guy needs all these in the passive, so like that he could be super powerful with the rest of his powers. You'll see what I'm talking about next. So I know what you're thinking. Why does Invader think I'm racist? Well, I'm going to answer that in a moment. Uh, can I get through telling you whether Voluses are awesome and get through that first? Get some patience, all right? Seriously, get it now. Anyway, so going on, shield boost, oh yeah, we're getting to the juicy stuff here. This is the power that makes the Volus so powerful, amazing, and a character that if played right can live on wave after wave without dying. Now, this I definitely recommend to spec it out this way always. A rank 4, go for the bottom to increase shields 40%. A rank 5, regeneration to reduce the delay of shields regenerating for you and your friends if, if you, you know, if you have friends. On rank 6, protection. Why? Because it increases shields by 50% for you and friends. Well, again, if you have friends. Mind you, this is mostly for your support because the Volus uh, wouldn't even need to go up to this rank to restore all shields. But the reason I love this rank is because of the second part of this awesome ability, which is take 50% less damage for 60 seconds. That's why before running from one spot of the map to the other, you should always use shield boost so that if for some reason a marauder wants to shoot you up kingdom come, you can handle it, right? Fitness. If you're going to make all of your Volus characters to be more offensive, the way I and presenting them here, then you only want 3 points in this rank. Anything else is just you wanting to make them tankier, which let's be honest, you'll never be. The Volus Fitness is so low, it's not even worth me mentioning the number of shields and health they have. Simply put, work it out so that your shield boost is specced out the way I showed you, and use it when moving from soft cover to soft cover and you'll be unstoppable. 
the Volus Roll. Oh yeah, these little beach balls roll. This is one of the best maneuvers against Banshee Warp Balls. You can roll to the side when a Banshee Warp Ball comes at you or forward to miss it. If for some reason though you are hit by a Banshee Warp Ball, use your Shield Boost to get better. Or if it's not available yet due to your Power Recharge, do the Volus Heavy Melee to get Damage Reduction Bonus which will reduce the Banshee Warp Ball's effect and it will fight to recharge your shields against it until your Shield Boost recharges. So, so far I have illustrated how awesome all the Volus are, simply in their similarities, and yet when I go to Pug Lobbies, I don't see you using the Volus. Why is that? Oh yeah, we'll get you, you being racist in a minute, don't worry, oh yeah, I will. So now that I have illustrated the awesome similarities and abilities that the Volus have across the board, let me show you what the rest of the individual abilities should be for each of these four little mini marshmallow commandos should look like. For the Volus Adept, you want his stasis as it is awesome at stopping all non-armored enemies. Spec it this way or else. <laughs> Just kidding, just spec it this way. Rank 4, Stasis Strength, so that you can deal 150% more damage before Stasis breaks. Oh yeah, talk about awesome. That means you and everyone will be able to destroy these enemies in seconds. Rank 5, Bonus Power, so that in case you need to use your Shield Boost right after, there is a chance that you won't need to wait for the Power Recharge. And Rank 6, Bubble so that you can trap multiple enemies. I don't know why you wouldn't think this is good, but yeah, you want to trap multiple enemies. All right, so let's go on to biotic orbs. I mostly use this for power recharge, in all honesty. Although you can create biotic explosions by catching characters in the stasis bubble and detonating them with the biotic orbs. And don't get me wrong, this is cool. You'd have to use very light weapons to do this continuously though. Okay, but personally, I prefer to keep the biotic orbs always on as a means to keep my power recharge strong and use heavy weapons that will allow me to kill enemies faster and use my other abilities for tactical play, right? By specking it out this way, you will get a maximum of 60% power recharge bonus for your powers. Rank 4 damage, rank 5 recharge speed, and finally rank 6 orb count so that it adds on to the recharge speed count since each orb provides a percentage towards that count. So having more equals more power recharge bonuses. And we're here to the Volus Engineer. This little guy is awesome as you can use him offensively in such an amazing way. He has recon mine and proximity mine powers. You can use the recon mine to constantly create powerful explosions that devastates enemy hordes or use it to highlight and weaken enemies for your team. And you also have the proximity mine to debuff enemies, allowing them to take more damage and destroy them with your weapons. That is super badass. You want to spec into damage in rank 4, as you already have a decent radius of 6 meters, and then damage of rank 5 for an additional 40% damage. And if you mainly play gold and lower difficulties, then take the invasive scan so that it is a team power that debuffs enemies by having them take more damage and also revealing where they are to the rest of the team. But if you are back and forth between gold and platinum difficulties, I would go for armor damage in order to drop a massive blow to the enemy boss spam and spawns and clusters of enemies that have lots of armor. For the proximity mine though, you only need to go up to rank 5, where rank 4 is radius to debuff more enemies at once, and rank 5 is damage taken, which is the rank that provides the debuff and allows those affected enemies to take 20% more damage for 8 seconds. I play this little guy kind of the way I play the Geth Infiltrator where I cloak and go to a spawn, drop a proxy mine and shoot the enemy to pieces or do the same but use the recon mine and blow them all to pieces. Oh yeah. So uh, why are you not using this guy? Huh? Why? Don't even get me started on how racist you are. Yeah you! Why wouldn't you use this guy? <sighs> okay moving on. The Volus Mercenary Sentinel is so great. He has powers like the Combat Drone when Spec Right stuns Phantoms, yeah Phantoms, and then Decoy when Spec Right shocks enemies and confuses synthetic and weaker enemies allowing you to drop them like the bad habits they are. For both powers you can go back and forth between which one you want to explode. If you want the decoy to explode, then you fill it in that way. You fill in the power that way, but if you want the drone to explode, which is what I normally choose as the drone power allows you to activate it behind enemies. That's pretty much why I like to activate the drone uh, the, the drone right behind the enemy and it's just way more effective that way. Allowing you to allowing you to use the combat drone more offensively so that when they destroy it, it also affects them when it gets destroyed. Oh yeah. 
tactical thinking. For this build, I recommend on decor rank 4 durability so it can last longer and rank 5 shock at his, as its range is decent and all the lower enemies get a good taste of shock juice for breakfast, right? For combat drone, go to rank 4, detonate as it provides 640 points of damage across 5 meters, see? This is why I like this one to blow up an enemy's nasty ugly faces. And then rank 5, I only go up to shock so that it stuns the enemies I am using this against. If you decide to spec this entirely and want to use chain lightning in rank 6, don't spec into shock into rank 5 as it may compete. You'd be better off specking into rank 5 shields and damage if you're going to fully spec into this ability and have your drone last longer while attacking the enemies with chain lightning. But yeah, you're not going to use this guy. <laughs> Cause yeah, you guessed it. That's right, you're, you're just racist. Yeah, I'll get to why in a moment. Hold your horses and stop trying to rush this video, right? And last but not least, we have the little bowler's vanguard cannonball. This little guy is sweet. Besides shield boost, he has the ability to recharge his shields by simply using biotic charge. Oh yeah, you can prime an enemy with incendiary ammo or disrupt the rounds. And then BAM! Biotic charge for sweet boom booms. Sweet enemy explosions. So, biotic charge, rank 4, force and damage, as you really shouldn't be charging into multiple, en multiple enemies anyway, but taking them one by one. It's up to you though. You can use the radius here depending on your preference. Rank 5, weapon synergy, as this character can only do a few things right after it charges. You can shoot your enemy in the face. Or you can do a defensive melee stance, and personally, I recommend you shoot the enemy in the face. Rank 6, go with barriers so that your full shields are restored, and you can take at least one or two bullets after your charge before dancing on your enemy after you've given him the business. This guy, I like to use like a little soldier that can carry heavy weapons, charge when he wants to detonate ammo powers like fire explosions and tech bursts, stagger enemies and recharge its barriers. Yeah, he's awesome. He's great. He's my buddy and just <laughs> seriously, just stop judging me. So we finally get to it, huh? I've been playing Pug Lobbies for over a month now and have I have not seen not one Bolus character. What is it, huh? Why are you so racist against the Bolus? What do you prefer, a blue sorry, is that it? Is it because they're not blue, really? Or are you more of the bird and feather type, huh? You prefer Turians? Huh? So the little guys don't have feathers, huh? Deal with it! Stop being so racist against the bolus and use them today, okay? So yeah guys, this is Invader 1. I hope that this video has reignited your love for the bolus. As I personally, I think they're great. Since day 1, I've been using them on Platinum and all other difficulties. And they're just truly awesome. But don't see them as just shield boosting spamming characters. They are offensive powerhouses that can support the team with both defense and offense. Try them today this way and you'll see what I mean. Just remember cloak first before doing anything and you will experience Volus goodness in all its glory. You can use heavy weapons like sniper rifles, shotguns like the Rieger, the Raider, the Wraith and more. He's not limited. They're not limited. Those who think that the Volus are limited are the ones who are limited in thinking. This has been fun, even if all you have been is just super racist. Still, this is Invader1, and see you on the next video. If this is your first time here, and you're interested in a channel focused specifically on Mass Effect, including upcoming single player Let's Plays, Tips and Tricks, Mass Effect 3 multiplayer guides, including hardcore challenges, team ups, and live comps, top lists, Mass Effect art, books, news, and more, with a new video every week on Tuesdays, and other videos throughout the week, then click on the subscribe button to stay connected with everything Mass Effect. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Invader 1 out at N7 Spec Ops.